Good morning. Welcome to Holy Trinity on this first Sunday of Advent. We're so happy to have you here. A few announcements before we get started. The first is today, right here in the sanctuary at 2 o'clock today, is our Lessons and Carols concert. The Concordia Concert Choir is coming and putting on a beautiful, beautiful concert for us this afternoon, full of readings and all the music that we have come to know and love. Everyone is invited to come. The admission is free, though you can make goodwill offerings if you, if you choose to. Um, we are participating in the Restrictions Exemption Program, which means while we will not be sitting in every second row, we will still have masks on and you will be required to show proof of vaccination before being allowed into the church. Our second announcement is starting tomorrow night and every Monday to Friday throughout Advent at 7 o'clock on Zoom. The White Mud Deanery will be hosting evening prayers slash Compline services. These services will be 15 to 20 minutes max, and you'll see faces you know, faces you don't, and maybe be able to put some faces to names that you've heard of. All are invited. The Zoom link to that is the same link every night, and it is in your announcements. On Sunday, December 12th from 1 to 4, right here in the yard at Holy Trinity, we are having our children's barnyard nativity. We have a bunch of animals coming, we will have shepherds, we will have stories, we will have hot chocolate and cookies and all of that fun, fun, adventy nativity, petting zoo animal barnyard fun stuff happening outside from one to four. It's a drop in, it's not a three hour service. It's a drop in, come and go as you please. And we hope to see kids, adults, everyone. It's going to be fun. We're actually doing this in partnership with our friends at Trinity Lutheran. So it should be a really great time. We are pleased to announce that on December 18th at 7.30, we are having the annotated Christmas songbook back. We have a podcast that's being released every day throughout Advent at 1 o'clock on our social medias, but the annotated Christmas songbook is going to actually put on a concert for us as well, December 18th at 7.30. Tickets for that are available at Ticks on the Square, and we will be participating in the Restrictions Exemption Program for that as well. The last announcement is we are doing a bunch of Advent fundraiser, fundraising here at the church. We are, every Sunday up until Advent, we are collecting money for the food bank, as well as hats, mitts, new underwear, and new socks for the men, women, and children at the Inner City Pastoral Ministry. We have our boxes set up here. They will be here all throughout Advent, and we encourage you, if you are able, to help bring something to put in there. This is not to be confused with our King Edward School and King Edward Academy Christmas Hamper Program that we will be doing. We will continue to be doing that, and I believe this week there's going to be an email going out specifically to everyone to explain how we're doing that this year. So with all of that, I invite you all to take a few moments as we prepare our hearts and minds as we enter into worship. Let us prepare our hearts as we await the coming of our Lord. Let us watch for the one who heard our cries and shouldered the suffering of our world. Let us anticipate the coming of Christ's eternal world with wholeness, reconciliation, and plenty for all. Let us wait in expectation for the day when God's glory is revealed in all its fullness. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand as able as we sing our processional hymn number 88, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray the collect of the day. God of justice and peace, from the heavens you rain down mercy and kindness. Raise our heads in expectation so that we may yearn for the coming day of the Lord and stand without blame before your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. season of Advent, we seek God's guidance. In this season of Advent, we remember God's promise. This morning, we light the first candle, the candle of hope. This candle reminds us that God's promises give us reason to be filled with hope. Hope for unity in a world of division. Hope for healing in a world of pain. And hope for peace in a world filled with anger and strife. We remember that Christ is our light and the source of our hope. Gracious God, as we begin our Advent journey, we thank you for the gift of your Son and for sending hope into a world filled with dread. Help us remember that we are your people, and because of your promises, we have every reason to be hopeful. Take away our doubt and fear 
and remind us that Christ is our light and the true source of hope. Amen. I invite the congregation to be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. 
How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see your face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and the Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. invite the congregation to please stand as able as we sing the hymn that announces our gospel. Number 515, Thou art the way to thee alone. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding, of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. 
Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of Christ. ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills, that we may serve you today, now, and always. Amen. Please be seated. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. I can't believe that we're already here. This day is already upon us. In some ways, it feels like this year has completely dragged by. We're in month 21 of living in pandemic mode, and this is not our first, but our second advent under pandemic rules. Though there's some hope, because this year we're here together, masked and distanced, but together nonetheless. But in other ways, it feels like this year has just flown by. How could we be entering into advent already? Weren't we just hosting rummage sales? Hasn't our kitchen been humming with food for the community? Haven't we all been at the local parks? Weren't we just in the garden out front, pruning flowers and tending to the vegetables? Yet here we are, Advent. I've always loved this season. I'm one of those people that gets excited over special holidays and tends to vibrate with, with anticipation. I've always loved the preparation and the wait. I love planning and counting down days and hours. I love the dichotomy of hurrying up to wait. I've always loved it. Though I don't imagine those around me always enjoyed my enthusiasm. You see, my excitement tends to manifest to those around me in unbridled, sometimes uncontrollable energy. I get thrills of tormenting others about Christmas gifts. I can chat relentlessly about decorations. I torment the household by singing off-tune and sometimes very inappropriate Christmas songs. And I can often be found in the kitchen baking countless Christmas treats and forcing everyone to eat them. This excitement you see has been with me my whole life. My parents can attest to this fact. They've dealt with the increased energy. They've dealt with the anticipation. They've seen the glimmer of excitement in my eyes. I think in a way to my parents when I was growing up, they might have seen these as signs. Signs that Christmas is coming. Just as we've got the change in seasons, from fall to winter, the darkening of days, the wintry drinks at Starbucks, the malls playing Christmas carols, we've got our church decked out in blue, decorations going up, all acting as signs of what's to come. When I was a child, one of the signs I always looked forward to was my advent calendar. It was always a beautiful manger scene that had a bunch of little numbered doors, one for each day of advent. Each day, we would open a little door on that calendar. We never got one of those really cool chocolate advent calendars, though. Growing up, I thought, sorry, Mom, I thought my mom was a Scrooge. All the other kids had these chocolate advent calendars, but she never got them for us. Then when my eldest son was about two, I picked him up one. And needless to say, I had to buy him a paper advent calendar before advent began because the calendar was eaten ahead of time. So in retrospect, Mom, I apologize, you weren't a Scrooge. She just knew the calendar didn't stand a chance with me in the house. So nevertheless, each day we'd open a door on our beautiful paper advent calendar. 
Behind the door was a Bible verse, a part of the Christmas story. Each door we opened was a sign that Christmas was getting closer. We were counting down the days together. Advent was a time of expectation, anticipation, and excitement. Yes, it meant Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, but it also meant for me, a child at that time, it meant grandparents, presents, and Santa Claus. I looked forward to the future one day at a time. Then something happened. Somewhere along the way, life got really real, and Advent changed. Advent was no longer just a season that got us to Christmas. Instead, Advent began to describe the reality of my life and our world. The Gospel text this morning about the destruction of the temple, war, earthquakes, famines, plagues, and betrayals took on new and often very personal meanings. This is now our second Advent with COVID among us. Though this year we can be physically together, the whole plague warning hits a little differently now. I think of natural disasters, and I think of our neighbors in BC who are dealing with horrendous devastation because of flooding and roads being taken out and lives being lost. I think of fires that have happened over the last two years, communities destroyed. Thinking of Linton, BC, a small town that's no longer there. I think of remains found on unmarked burial grounds. I think of abuse, suffered, and mistreatment of our LGBTQ2S plus friends and family. Advent looks different now. Advent hits differently now. There's still so much excitement, so much preparation and anticipation, but now there's also so much more. Advent's become a season of change, a season of looking and truly seeing, a season of looking to a future that's not yet clear or known. I'm not exactly sure when it began or how it happened, but I know that it did. All the signs were there. I sometimes wish Advent was as simple and easy as opening a little door on an Advent calendar and knowing that Christmas is one day closer. But it's not. You and I both know the world is not that simple and life is simply not that easy. Maybe that's why every year on this day, the first Sunday of Advent, we hear a gospel reading that seems to describe the end of the world and signs that will accompany that ending. There will be signs, Jesus said. This gospel always reminds me of the song Signs by Five Man Electrical Band, which was released in the 70s, with the chorus that I'm going to say, not sing, to save you all that pain. The chorus is, sign, sign, everywhere a sign blocking out the scenery, breaking my mind. Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? I think now, more than ever, our world needs to see the signs and read the signs. The longer I watch, the more I listen and see and experience, the more I realize how necessary those signs are. I want to be reminded that those signs are there. Jesus says if we look, we'll see the signs everywhere. In the sun, the moon, the stars. In the distress among Earth's nations and in, and in the roaring of the sea and its waves. I certainly saw the signs when the whole world shut down. When death was prevalent, when people were getting sick and sicker, and there was nothing we could do but stay home, stay safe, and eventually get vaccinated. I certainly saw the signs when we started searching the ground for unmarked graves, no longer letting ears ignore the screams for justice. We still see these signs today. Signs of people without the necessities of life. People without places to lay their head down at night. People without food to nourish their bodies. We see signs today in the pictures of refugees and in the world's violence. I've no doubt you've all seen other signs too, in your life and in the world. They're everywhere, and they're not hard to spot. They are, however, too easily and quickly misunderstood and misused, too easily forgotten and pushed aside. There will be signs, 
are words of hope and reassurance. But far too often, they're heard as words of warning and threat. And when they are, signs are used to predict the future of doom and loss. They become indicators that the world will end and we better shape up or God is going to get us. Our misunderstanding of signs pushes us further into the darkness and deeper into our own fear. Our misuse of signs blinds us to the very much anticipated coming of the Son of Man with power and great glory. There will be signs are not Jesus' words of warning and threat. Instead, Jesus says that when we see signs, we are to stand up, raise our heads, and know that help is on the way, our redemption, our healing, our Savior has drawn near. The signs are not a reason to hang our head in despair or to shrink from life. The signs are our hope and reassurance that God has not abandoned us, that God notices us, that God cares for us, and that God is always with us. Jesus shows us signs so that we can act, so that we can collectively be the ears, eyes, feet, and hands of love and charity and mercy and hope right here, right now, in our communities. We just need to know how to read the signs. Jesus' parable of the fig tree teaches us how to read these signs. The Advent signs are as ordinary and common as a fig tree sprouting leaves. We see the leaves, and we know something is happening. Summer is already near. It's a new season with new life, new growth, new fruit. That's the promise and good news of the Advent signs. And yet that promise, that good news, is fulfilled not apart from, but in and through the reality of our life circumstances and our world events, no matter how difficult or tragic they may be. So what if we looked at our lives and our world, and we began to read and understand the signs as sprouting leaves? What would we see? What could it mean? It could mean that together we're entering a new season. We could see new life and new growth. We could produce new fruit. We could open the doors of our life with new courage and confidence. We could look on the world with a new sense of compassion and a new sense of hope. We could be strengthened to do the work God has given us to do. Yes, the Advent seasons of our lives, they can be long and difficult, and they can be painful. But the simple and honest gospel truth is this. We never face those seasons without the signs of hope and reassurance. Signs that point to the one who is coming. Because after all, Jesus told us, there will be signs. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand as able as we confess the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we say, I believe in God. invite the congregation to assume whatever posture they find most prayerful for the prayers of the people.
At the end of each section of the prayer, please respond to Lord in your mercy with hear our prayer. On this first Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of hope, we are thankful for this opportunity to hope for better days in which the fears and stresses of the pandemic will ease and we will have more opportunities to return to the family gatherings, social events and activities that we have enjoyed, that we have enjoyed. In a time in which we are increasingly aware of the devastating effects of climate change, we hope for better strategies to cope with this new reality and for the resolve and self-discipline to diminish its causes. Help us to avoid the paralysis that comes from the dread of anticipating bad things and give us faith to hope for good things. Help us to be aware of our responsibilities to others and give us the courage to act in ways that will create a more sustainable future. Hope sustained by our faith in your goodness and care for us can give us the energy we need to care for future generations. Lord, in your mercy. In this season of expectation, give us ears to hear, O God, and eyes to watch, that we may know your presence in our midst during this holy season of Advent, as we anticipate the coming of Christ. Let us look for signs of hope and rejoice in them. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we pray that you will comfort and sustain all refugees who must leave familiar places and customs and struggle to adapt to a new way of life that is not of their choosing. Give them the courage to persevere and the hope they need to make the best of new circumstances. Today, we remember everyone affected by the rain, floods, and road closures in BC. Give them the courage, strength, and hope to persevere in these difficult times and to create a new life in new circumstances. In our own communities, help us to give hope to everyone who lacks the physical, financial, and social resources to enjoy this season. Help us to remember that the build-up to Christmas can be very painful and lonely for some people and to reach out to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. In the Worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. In the Diocese of Saskatchewan, we pray for the Right Reverend Michael Hawkins, Bishop. We pray for the Right Reverend Adam Helcott, Bishop of Missinibi, and the Right Reverend Isaiah Larry Beardy, Assistant Bishop of Missinibi. In St. Mary Edgerton and St. Thomas Wainwright, we pray for Rachel Parker, Rector. In the Kamana Parish of the Bouye Diocese, we pray for Anaphasi Minani Catechist. We pray for all First Nations people, and especially today for the Whitefish Lake First Nation. In our neighborhood, we pray for St. Paul's Lutheran Church, Pastor Heidi Wachowick. We pray for Linda, Primate of the Anglican Church of Canada. We pray for our Bishop Stephen and for Larry, Lutheran Bishop of Alberta and the Territories. We pray for Aaron at Trinity Lutheran Church. We pray for our clergy at Holy Trinity, for Danielle and her family, for Robin, Alan, Penny, and their families. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy and healing, you who hear the cries of those in need, receive these petitions of your people that all who are troubled may know comfort peace, courage, and hope. Today we pray especially for everyone on our prayer list, for Roger and Ed and Father Allen, for Gertrude, Margareta, and Natalie, for Hannah, Dorothy, and Jean, 
for Harry, Jenny, Hughes, and Laura, for Margaret Ann and family, for Randy, Norman, and Pam, for David, Ian, Ben, Lee, Bernadine, and family, for Harry and Diana, for Noel, Gerard, and Leonard, and for James. Lord, in your mercy. We seek the mighty God in the most unlikely places, as a child in a stable and in an empty tomb. May God hear these prayers which come from the unlikely corners of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of all the prophets, you herald the coming of the Son of Man by wondrous signs in heavens and on earth. Guard our hearts from despair, so that we, in the company of the faithful and by the power of your Holy Spirit, may be found ready for the coming of our redemption, the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all of our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. I invite the congregation to please stand as able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a sound of peace with our neighbors. Invite the congregation to join in song as we sing our offertory hymn number 89, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
stirs within us the expectation of the coming of your Son. Accept all we offer you this day, and sustain us with your promise of eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord who in the fullness of time came among us in our flesh and opened to us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, that we, without shame or fear, may rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. spoken through the prophets, and above all in the Word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, 
and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior taught us, let us sing. You prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. table is set. All are welcome. Our bread today is gluten-free for all to share in the one bread, one body. If you'd like to receive a blessing instead of the bread, please indicate this to me by crossing your arms over your chest. And David is going to usher one lane out at a time so we can maintain physical distancing.
I invite the congregation to please stand as able. God, for whom we wait, you have fed us with the bread of eternal life. Keep us ever watchful that we may be ready to stand before the Son of Man. We ask this in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us. God, the Creator, judge all merciful. Make us worthy of a place in the kingdom. May God, the Son, becoming among us in power, reveal in our midst the promise of glory. May God, the Holy Spirit, make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. I invite the congregation to join in our recessional hymn, number 110, Sleepers Wake, A Voice Astounds Us. Mm -hmm. 